Oftentimes when people hear the word portfolio as it relates to business, they think of a stock portfolio. But in marketing, when we talk about portfolios, we're talking about a portfolio of products or a portfolio of businesses. And we've already looked at a couple of those. We were talking about Procter & Gamble and all of their different businesses, uh, Old Spice, Secret, Oral-B, Loves, uh, Mr. Clean, Head and & Shoulders, and on and on and on and on and on. And we talked about PepsiCo and their portfolio of businesses, their soft drink businesses, their snack businesses, their food businesses, and on and on and on. What you want to do is have multiple businesses that can create synergies and also the more profitable businesses can fund investment in the growing businesses. If you don't have multiple businesses, if you just have one business, you're kind of stuck with the all eggs in one basket problem. And that has occurred. The WD-40 company is the name of the company that makes the iconic product, WD-40, and for years and years and years, that's the only product that they had. But they have since diversified. Same thing I've talked about the Clorox company a bunch of times. For decades, all the Clorox company made was, was Clorox, the bleach. But now the Clorox company has a portfolio of different businesses. As you can see from this uh, graphic, uh, they've got their home care businesses that includes the you know bleach and the cleaning products uh, and laundry products, but also they've got auto businesses with STP and Armorall, the Glad uh, business, the charcoal business with Kingsford and Matchlight, the cat litter business. A lot of people are surprised that they have food products. The dressings and sauces business includes Hidden Valley Ranch salad dressing and Casey Masterpiece barbecue sauce. The Brita water business. Burt's Bees. Nowhere on any Burt's Bees product will it ever show the Clorox name, but that is a Clorox business, you know, and so on. So what we like to do is look at our portfolio of businesses. And one of the most common ways that people will look at a portfolio of businesses for analysis is to use what's referred to as the Boston Consulting Group or the BCG matrix. And the Boston Consulting Group matrix or the BCG matrix breaks businesses into four uh, quadrants. And those uh, four quadrants are, and I'm going to start at the lower right hand corner uh, these are low market share low growth businesses and they're often referred to as dogs these are sbus that nobody really wants uh, they're not good businesses to be in but inevitably sometimes businesses that you get into you know eventually settle down here notice that along the x-axis we've got relative market share from low on the right to high on the left on the y-axis we've got market growth rate from low uh, on the bottom to high on the top and then therefore we can break this into uh, four quadrants in the quadrant that is low share but high growth those are question marks those are sbus whose products you know we're not sure what they're going to do then in the quadrant to the left of there, we've got stars, or sometimes called rising stars. Uh, those are SBUs whose products uh, you know, are doing very, very well, dominant share in high growth markets. And then below that are our so-called cash cows, our cash cow businesses, dominant market share, but low growth markets. Typically, cash cow businesses fund investment in growth businesses like question marks and uh, rising stars. Uh, and we'll get more to that issue of, of funding, building, and, and so forth in a minute. In reality, you're going to look at your businesses in terms of their size. So on this uh, slide, when we're looking at a uh, portfolio analysis for a computer manufacturer, the size of the circle indicates the sales level of the uh, business. So the biggest business is their laptop and personal computer business, and that's a cash cow. And that cash cow can fund investment into their, uh, into their question mark businesses, which is the integrated foam palm device, and their sub notebooks handheld computer, which is a rising star. 
Probably not going to spend any money on their mainframe computer business, which is down there in the dog uh, quadrant. Apple, you know, has their uh, growth, growth, growth business, the iPhone, and a lot of the funding for the iPhone is self-generated, but some of it comes from their legacy businesses, their Mac and their uh, iPod. Uh, of course, now the iPhone is so much bigger than all the rest of the businesses that those businesses can't uh, handle all of the investment. But basically, when we're looking at... Uh, at our portfolio of businesses, we're trying to decide what should we do with regard to investment in those businesses. Should we build the business or just try to maintain, hold the business, you know, or harvest, try to get as much profit out of it as possible, or even just get rid of the business, divest it. And typically, depending on where you are uh, in the uh, uh, BCG growth chart matrix, that would kind of uh, let you know what you would want to do. For example, in those growth businesses, those are the question marks and the rising stars, you want to build those businesses. And so you're investing in them, although you're certainly going to invest more in the stars than in the question marks. So, uh, you know, uh, that would make a lot of common sense. Now, the cash cows, those are far and away the most profitable businesses that you have, but because they're growing slowly, you're not going to invest a lot in them. So you're going to try to maintain uh, what they're doing and just kind of hold them. Finally, those dogs, which sometimes people have used the term uh, uh, problem child for that quadrant, those are the ones that you either want to you know, harvest and just try, try to get as much out of them as you can without investing or just get rid of the business entirely. So you might you know, choose to harvest or you might just choose to just get rid of it and divest. In fact, I mentioned Procter & Gamble a couple of minutes ago. Procter & Gamble has so many businesses, but they've decided that, you know what, maybe we've got too many businesses, you know, and maybe we should get rid of some of those businesses. Uh, this next graphic, uh, and the wording comes directly from Procter & Gamble internal uh, communications, Creating a simpler company, we will eliminate 60% of the brands and the complexity they create while retaining about 85% of sales and 95% of before-tax profit. That's a good trade. And then they give an update. Procter & Gamble's 40% through its brand shutting strategy haven't recently exited the pet care, battery, and bleach businesses. Management estimates there are about 60 brands left to divest between now and the end of fiscal 2016. What they're going after is creating a simpler, more focused company. As previously announced, Procter & Gamble's taking an important strategic step uh, forward in their business and brand portfolio. They will be a company of 70 to 80 brands. The final result should be a company that's easier to manage and quicker to respond to changing customer needs. P&G should also be more profitable as it focuses on blockbuster brands such as Pampers and Tide, which dominate their respective markets and have extremely attractive growth outlooks. Another way to look at, well, how should we spend our money where should we invest you know where should we you know not invest is often referred to as the GE General Electric McKinsey model and as you can see here the General Electric McKinsey model breaks into two things business position that's how strong you are in the business and that looks at being high medium or low and the overall attractiveness of the market and that is high medium or low Clearly, some things are no-brainers. For example, if you are in a business where you are strong and the business is attractive, well, that's obvious. Green light, spend, you know, invest and grow that business. On the other hand, uh, another kind of no-brainer, if you're in a business where your business position is low and the market is not very attractive, that's clearly a red light. You know, let's not spend it all. In fact, let's let's just harvest or even get rid of it. And then in the middle, okay, I'm not sure about these. They're, uh, you know, medium business position, medium attractiveness, or high attractiveness but low business position, or high business position but low attractiveness. Not quite so obvious. But some of those investment decisions are, are kind of no-brainers. Well, portfolio analysis lets us look at our portfolio of businesses and make these decisions.
That'll do it for this module on portfolio analysis.